Good morning, viewers, and welcome back to Youth Wednesdays here on the Tobago Updates Morning Show. This morning, we're chatting with Dr. Denise Soyafat Angus, and she is the political leader of the Innovative Democratic Alliance. Good morning to you, Dr. Angus. Good How are you morning. doing? I'm um, good, thanks, and it's always great to be on with the youth. Of course, of course. <laughs> I okay. admire the show very well. Yeah. So this morning, we're going to start off the conversation by talking about the recently concluded National Carnival. What are your initial thoughts on the Tobago edition specifically? It was very disappointing. And I know that the participants uh, were not very pleased about the whole uh, exercise. Of course, you will always have um, the... Juve. I mean, Juve is Juve. But when you talk about the carnival experience as a whole, I think it was quite lacking. Of course, we must commend um, Panjan Bego for their exercise that they put on. But, um, and, and pretty much that's their uh, staging in Tobago, and that has always been a great event. And I commend Cats and Jammers and uh, Young Kush Ramsey as the arranger um, for the work that they have done and for their placement um, in, in, in that exercise. But when you're talking about the Calypsonians and the, um, the band leaders, you know, this year we had many Calypsonians who placed in Trinidad to go down. And I remember when I was there as the Secretary of Community Development and Culture, we would recognize the investment it takes for a Calypsonian in Tobago to come up with a song that made it to the national level and then to be able to put things in place to be able to perform down there, transportation, taking your, your backup uh, singers down there. And that is a costly exercise. So we would normally give them a stipend of about 10,000 for them to get there. And this year, I understand they've got nothing. The band leaders coming out on the road and they were told that they wouldn't be, the, the price structure was being cut. Um, they weren't given a stipend because of not being registered as part of the Procurement Act. I think we have to understand where our people are in Tobago and take them to the next level. You don't wait until the end to say, well, sorry, we can't give you anything because you're not registered. You need to know how many of your band leaders are registered, how many are not registered, and hold their hands, get them to register because you're talking about developing a product. We're not just talking about staging an event. And if we're talking about developing a product, you have to look at all aspects of the product and see how you can bring it into development. And then, children have been preparing all year, you cancel the kiddies carnival and tell them, okay, you could go to Roxborough. How many parents had the resources to play in the band and then to get transportation to go to Roxborough. How many bands could have accommodated getting the children to Roxborough? So it, 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 you know, it's not a well thought out, how are we going to do this? And then there is the uh, confused state with what are we doing with October and what are we doing with February? And that has not been thought through yet. Uh, in my recent um, press conference, uh, about two weeks ago, I stated to them, I said, you all need to sit down with the stakeholders, number one. You need to consider that if you're having Tobago Carnival in October, that you can move the adult program there. So you have the adults there, make it a competition, have them partner with people in Trinidad before, uh, and not just allow Trinidad to come in, um, create a partnership and also dedicate the one in February to the Kiddies Carnival so you could truly grow that product from there. So you basically have a sustainable program happening of growth and development. No, I Kiddies. love that you mentioned the October Carnival because I remember last year in October when you came here, we spoke about how financially or um, how the October Carnival affects Tobago financially. And I remember you saying that um, I believe you said that it's more viable for us to keep it in February 
as opposed to October. But would you say that because of the significant difference in the turnout for the February carnival this year in comparison to the October carnival, is it still viable for us to have the February carnival? No, I, I always said that you have the option of both. Mm -hmm. You have to determine what you do where. Okay. Because I was at the Festival Commission when we approved actually having the October Carnival. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we had discussed with the stakeholders is just this, that you put the adults in October, they could dedicate their time to making their costumes and all of that for October. And it is a competition because if you were driving excellence, you need to have a competition. You have the competition in October. In February, because you do have tourist ships coming in February, you do have people who want a smaller carnival in February, and it is a national carnival. So in February, you then dedicate to the kiddies carnival so that the band leaders can focus their attention on oh, making the kiddies costumes. Carnival. The, those winners from October, you can have them just be a showcase so that if you have a tourist ship coming in, you then have something that you can just show them, encourage them to get in, involved in the bandwidth, you know, um, from that perspective. Okay. So you have two bites of the cherry that are quite distinct. And regarding the cancellation of the Kiddies Carnival this year and them having to move it to Roxborough, would you say that was a result of most of our resources being pushed towards the um, oil spill? Well, I don't know if it is the resources being pushed towards the oil spill versus just not thinking and so it as an opportunity to just, just cancel it. Uh, because... If you're thinking about the development, if you're thinking about the people and the type of resources that they would have invested in creating that uh, product of a kiddies um, carnival experience, then you would not have canceled it. You could have moved it into a different space. Uh, you could have outfitted the, um, what is it, the parade park out in um, Bacalet. You could have done something like that close by, but a little more inland and uh, still have it staged out there. And so I don't think there was much thought that went into um, the carnival experience mm -hmm. for the children. I think the thought was, oh, well, we have this oil spill. Let's just cancel it and, 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 and oh, move so on. Nice. Just send them to Roxborough. But when you look at the logistics of sending them to Roxborough without saying, okay, well, we would give a stipend for the people who were supposed to come to town and have to go to Roxborough. You know, you have to just think about the whole picture and not just pieces of it. And that's what I find that this administration has been very reactive and not really thinking things through as in the whole product, the whole development of the product. And this is what you have coming up when, when that happens. Okay. And um, speaking of the current administration and the oil spill, would you say that enough is being done in terms of uh, dissemination of information to the public, perhaps, or containment efforts? I don't know. That is a, it's a tough call because, you know, I said yesterday that the one thing that you have inside of a crisis like this is that you must have technical expertise and political collaboration. I don't think there's enough political collaboration to have to be go get to where it needs to go. I mean, it is not a hidden <laughs> fact that the current chief secretary and the prime minister uh, don't have a good relationship. They are not adhering to even the Tobago House of Assembly Act where it says that they shall have regular meetings that would treat with the harmony of Tobago's affairs. I think by now, and I'm not hearing yet, whether there are a team of experts um, who have begun to look at this, you know, yes, they're dealing with the short-term containment, 
but we now have to start looking at the medium term and long term effects of what this oil spill means to us. Um, I continue to say that this oil spill could represent the uh, the impact of it could represent uh, what has been to us the flora of 1963 and even worse. Flora of 1963, they estimated it was 45 million lost to the island. I am saying with this current oil spill, you're looking at billions in uh, when you look at up to the long-term effect because you can have long-term effect on the health of the residents of the area and it is something I'm advocating for that a study be done over the, the course of maybe 15 years of these residents to see what impact uh, they've had from living in the area with that um, oil spill that happened. You have the impact on the fisher, the fisher folk, um, that community. Um, are they going to have to move their sites for quite some time in terms of fishing? Some of them may go out of business. You have then the um, the impact on the private sector and and the economy and our marine life, our um, you know the the, the what do you call them? Um, <laughs> the um, mangroves, you know, which is part of our tourism product. They affect the effect on our tourism product on a whole. So there are a lot of different areas of impact. And I think the time has come that we have to start putting a team together to begin now mapping that out. Um, waiting uh, anymore, I, I think it's, it's paramount that we have to do that. And therefore, there has to be a communication between the, the Chief Secretary and the Prime Minister about where we're going. Yes, the Prime Minister gave his, his word that, oh, things will be put in place. But I think the time has come. Let us put the expert team together. When the expert team comes up with that impact, we have to be able to say, put together a Tobago f uh, oil spill recovery fund so that we have access with the criteria as to how people access that fund to keep the island buoyant and to keep it moving. Um, I think time has come to begin hearing now that type of conversation. Yeah. You have to move in a transition. Yes, we're in the containment, and I think I've heard that they have pretty much started to contain. Well, you have to move into the next phase. You cannot wait for one phase to fully come to completion before you get into the next phase. Okay. And with regards to the efforts, um, would you say that the reason that it, they probably, it's probably not up to par or where it should be is because it's something that is new or something that we really did not expect to happen. So it's all a new experience, maybe similar to COVID. Would you say that that is probably one of the reasons why the response is the way it is. I mean, from some of the images that we're seeing with how the um, how the Lambo, the Scarborough area rather looked <coughs> in comparison to how it looks now, I would say that, you know, the cleanup efforts would have been successful so far. And um, with regards also to collaboration on a national effort, I know that we have persons from um, different divisions in Trinidad and they are here on the island currently collaborating with TEMA. Mm -hmm. So we have that national input most definitely. Mm -hmm. So um, in terms of the response, would you say that it is the way it is or that you probably don't perceive it to be as good as it should be because it's something that is new or something that the that team or whoever probably did not expect to happen. Again, you need the experts to come in and do an accurate analysis. Yeah? <clears throat> I am not an expert in that area. If you ask me about health, I could tell you about health. <laughs> you know, and but we need to have the experts on the ground. The experts are going to be able to tell us, well listen, <laughs> the mangrove is totally gone. And we, they should have been able to contain that and protect the mangrove within the first 24 hours. But I believe that um, the, they have been doing containment efforts as it relates to those eco-sensitive areas. I know yesterday on the show with Candice on Good Morning Tobago, they had a representative here and he was speaking about how they have been containing the eco-sensitive areas. Mm -hmm. So a lot of impact really has not been done to the eco-sensitive areas. No, we don't know that yet. Yeah. There needs to be a study. I always work with the science, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, science-based, and we can't just look and say, okay, well, 
it looks okay because there's a lot of the ecosystem that occurs within the mangrove, looking at it and saying, well, it doesn't look like it's affected. That's not enough. They have to be continually testing the waters, testing, you know, underneath, looking at the, 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 the life forms that you have within there and seeing how they survive over time. And this is why I'm calling for an expert group to come in, marine biologists, public health, economists, you know, that type of group to come in and begin the studies such that we can accurately know where we are. And this is the challenge. We keep wanting to just um, create uh, estimates and all of that. We need accurate data if Tobago is to move forward in a progressive fashion, not just <clears throat> looking and saying, well, it looks good. That's not enough. We need the accurate data the science that would tell us how are we fearing in the long term. Suppose now in the next five years, we start to see a plethora of lung cancers on the island. What are we going to say? Oh, well, that's just, it happened. No, it didn't happen just like that. Are, the, are those patients coming from that Lambo area? Is, was that the impact of the, 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 the oil spill? So we cannot just now say, Oh, well, it looks like it's being contained. We don't know. We need to have those studies in place. And therefore, you need to have that fund that says this is a potential. In five years, the system in Tobago will not be overwhelmed. And by expansion, Trinidad will not be overwhelmed by cases of lung cancer or respiratory diseases because we are already apprised of what we could expect and therefore we have the resources in place just in case that happens and we know how it happens. We also know, because we have not figured out yet, well, not that I know, who is responsible because that person who is responsible, that company who is responsible should have had insurance that is, is, is helping us with this. We must be able to tell the insurance company, well, look, we are looking at this down the road. It's not just the money payment for cleanup now, but the we're looking at the effects. secondary and the mm -hmm. tertiary effects. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Angus, for coming on and chatting with us this morning. Unfortunately, viewers, we are out of time. I hope that sometime soon we can continue this conversation. But in the meantime, we're going to take a short break and we're going to be right back. Remember to share the live, share the live, share the live.